we are here today because uh, an Elsie Allen student uh, was very concerned about the fact that juniors and seniors did not have a career day this year because of budget cuts. And she came to me and said that something needed to be done about it. She's very persistent. We had just done a green jobs conference at Santa Rosa Junior College, and we discussed adapting that to this setting for Elsie Hallam. So I would like to recognize that person who was my daughter, Benita Margaronis. And thank you very much for getting us here, Benita. So why are we here today? All of us are here because we want to help ensure that you guys have a great future. And whether that future involves going off to a four-year school or staying around here, hopefully, you want to have a job that's a, that's a good job. And nobody is more committed to ensuring the opportunities for you guys and gals than my former student, Sonoma County Supervisor, Efren Correa. Efren? Buenos dias, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Petty. You know, I actually still recall the, uh, one of my first interactions with Mr. Petty uh, at Santa Rosa Junior High then that, uh, you know, shared with me his experiences having uh, attended Berkeley, UC Berkeley, uh, but also shared with me the opportunity to dream and to dream big and that anything that we set ourselves to do uh, was achievable. And uh, I've never really forgotten even those uh, uh, conversations as a 13, 14-year-old uh, uh, whippersnapper, so to speak, and uh, really kind of thinking long term. But if I can just walk away with one message today, dream big and allow the work that you want to do to be either a passion that you feel, either something that you're good at, or if worst comes to worst, paying the bills, right? So uh, for me, it's a great honor to be here. Mr. Petty, thank you for the opportunity, just to give you a sense of the outlook. But there will be opportunities in agriculture, in tourism, in green building, and the, the opportunities are endless, but I just ask you to continue to be engaged and interested in not only self-developing and learning, but, but, but in per, uh, uh, putting in the work ethic that is necessary. Now, about you, um, I'm going to give you, how much time do I have? Two minutes. Okay, I got two minutes. I got one little story about you getting ready for junior college. So, I'm an older guy. I'm a grandfather. In Spanish, we call it an abuelo, an abuelito. So I've got my granddaughter in the back seat, Lena, three years old, can barely talk. But she's brilliant, just like you were when you were three years old. And she goes, Tito, that was my nickname, Tito, yeah, mija. Where was my voice before I could talk? <laughs> I said, what did you say? This. Where was this before I could talk? I said, Lucelina. I pulled over <laughs> the car. We were in the car. I said, you know what? Let me think about that one. This is Tito. College educated. I'm a vice president. The three-year-old has me pull over because I had to think about her question. I said, Mija, you always had your voice. You just had to learn how to use it. She goes, okay. Like I'm using it? Exactly. Okay. Employers tell us social skills, that's the ability to work with others in teams, is one of the most important things to be successful in a job. That's part of your voice. Cultural competency. How to relate with people of different cultures and backgrounds is one of the skills you need. If you're bilingual, if you speak more than one language, that is an asset. That's a skill you'll carry into your work life and your professional life. And last, a college education. The research shows that college education will enable you to earn more money and to be more personally satisfied over the span of your life. My encouragement is to continue to learn how to use your voice. Thank you very much, Elsie Ellen. <laughs>